Hello everyone, uh, created a new video today to try to answer some of the questions or a question that I've seen uh, pretty often in the Facebook forums and that is how to create a single unit that is supported by two inputs. So something that looks more or less like this, where we don't have enough room to create uh, two, uh, two different units, so we just wanna do one. And so, um, yeah, the process I'm gonna show will will be applicable in case that you wanted to do over two preparations instead of implants or one implant, one preparation, whatever the, the mix may be, you'll be able to use more or less the same workflow to um, create the, the a, a good final result. Now, this is going to be a two-step process, which means we'll end up creating two different order forms. So the first one we're going to create, we'll select our antagonist. Uh, the, the, the thing we want to make sure is that we select here the type of unit we, we want to create, whether it's going to be a first molar, second, or premolars, whatever. In this case, we'll say a, a number 30. So we'll click on it, and then you can either select Pontic Wax Up or Anatomic Pontic. Um, I just like using the Wax Up restoration types out of um, that. That's just what I've been using. And so in this first order, it doesn't matter which order form you, uh, which material you select. So I'll just select Zirconia. The only important thing to tell the software is that you will not be scanning the wax up, you'll be designing it digitally. So we'll go ahead and select that. Now our occlusion relationship here, our occlusal relationship, we will save our order form and jump right into the design. <clears throat> so in this first order, what we're going to be doing is creating the wax up we're gonna be using at the very end. So um, I, I've already designed the case, so that's why it's prompting me to do this. So I'll go ahead and select the lower and then the upper. And we'll follow the workflow that ExoCAD is going to, to prompt us to follow. So if, we have to go through this uh, virtual wax of bottom step, even though we're not going to be making any use of it. It's just part of the process that the software is going to make us go through. So once this is done, we'll get to the step where we'll be able to um, place our Pontic. And so we'll take a, a bit of time to make sure that that's looking great there. All right, so here we go. And I'm not, I'm not gonna be overly picky here. I don't think it is necessary for demo purposes. Uh, we'll just continue on with this library. And so in this step is where we want to get as close as possible to what the final product should look like. So we'll go ahead and make sure that our occlusion is correct. And so for demo purposes, we're gonna assume that this is perfect. We'll go to the next step and then we can do some free forming uh, changes or fine tuning. So once again, um, I, I will assume that you know exactly how to do this and that therefore I don't need to go uh, through all the details. So we'll just assume that this is exactly what we're looking for. That is perfect. We just wanna make sure that everything looks fine. And so we then move on to the following step. Well, uh, at this point, actually, we don't. That, that's all we needed to do. So we are going to isolate our Pontic and we are going to export it as a mesh. So <clears throat> you can call it whatever you want. I'll call it wax up. Just make sure that here, obviously, you select yes, but here you always use the original coordinate system of scan data. The reason being, if you utilize this, then it'll be saved in the same uh, position in relationship to the rest of the files that are part of the case. So that's that's what we want to do. Okay, so now we have all the information that we need, a, our final product, if you will, our working model and our antagonist. All right, so now we are going to minimize that and go back to our order form. And here we are going to make the following change. For number 30, now we're gonna go to an atomic wax up. Now the material matters, depending on what, what the final product will be. And then where it says um, scan wax up, this time we'll say yes, we are gonna be scanning it. And also we are going to tell it that this is gonna be screw retained. Now, because our case here has two um, implants, we have to select two options of a screw retained crown, all right? And so here we can use either 29 or 31, it doesn't really matter. And so now we'll save our our order form and move on to the design process. And then we'll start importing the files um, in the order that XCAT requests. <clears throat> so first is always the working model. 
right? So we'll bring that in. Then the scan bodies, I'm going to use the same scan because the scan bodies are there. And now it's going to ask us for a wax up scan. So we'll import our wax up and then our antagonist. Now, in theory, the antagonist should not be necessary here because we made all those changes in the, in the previous uh, design. But uh, we'll bring it in anyway. So uh, we'll follow the workflow that Exocat suggests here. This, these are Medentica uh, bases. So we'll just, um, whatever, this R series should be fine. And so uh, I will go over this step real quick. So as you click to align and you click best fit matching, you'll notice that the top of our, of our scan body is not aligned correctly. So it, it is off. It, not by, by not very much, but it's still off. So the way that I overcome this is depending on how much of the scan body is actually being shown by the scans, you're going to have this issue. So what you want to do is have the software, um, instead of looking for everything that we're visualizing here, including the tie base, and, and the software is looking for that information in order to align the, the, the scan body, we're going to reduce the amount of information it has to look for. So I'll go ahead and reduce it this much. And then when I click best fit matching, my alignment is better. Okay. So the same thing is going to happen here to this implant because it's, it's deeper into the, um, the tissue. So it's, it's off. Okay. But by more than, than the, the, the previous one. So I'm going to hide a little bit of this best fit matching and now my alignment is a lot better. Okay. So just, uh, just a quick tip there. So we'll go next. Then the software will ask us to do the emergence profile step. I'm going to uh, omit it completely on, on both. And then uh, here, I'm just going to assume that you guys know exactly how to uh, manipulate this step. Uh, so I'm just going to make this small change here so that the software takes less time to uh, make the adaptation. So once we have our emergence profile design and we're happy with it, we click next and the software will automatically start adapting our wax up scan or our Pontic here to the two implants. Now, once the adaptation is done, we are going to have to do some free, some fine tuning. So here, for example, get rid of all this extra information. And again, I'm not going to be overly picky here with this design. I just want to show uh, the process. And so we'll get rid of uh, this information here or the, all this extra material. And there we have it. There's going to be our final uh, result. Now, as we move forward, it'll ask for adaptations. Hopefully we took care of that in the previous step. I actually didn't uh, for demo purposes. So when we get to this step, there's one more thing here. Um, the software asks whether we want to design this, uh, the cylinders and they're, they're done for protection so that, um, so that there's enough thickness around the screw channel. So it doesn't chip. The only problem is that the, this structure is never flush with the surface of the crown. So instead of adding points here and moving it around so that it's actually flush, that takes too much time, you can just turn them off and go to the next step and the software will finish the design without making you design those cylinders. So at the end, this is gonna be our end result. And that's pretty much all there's to it. If you have any questions about the, this workflow or uh, anything related to it, make sure that you leave it in the comments and I appreciate you watching the video and following the channel. Thank you.